Hello, welcome back. In today's video lecture we will be discussing a classic example from scenic planning known as Bryce's Paradox. This example is going to help us to illustrate some of the important aspects of mechanism design. The idea is that a government official has proposed a public infrastructure uh, work, maybe a bridge, that could potentially reduce traffic congestion. And we're going to try to analyze how much money we should be willing to spend as a society to build this bridge. The important, the key element of our analysis is going to be that we will have to analyze how building the bridge is going to change the behavior of the individuals in the city. So let us begin. Most of the things I will say today are going to still hold true in fairly complicated cities with complicated traffic patterns. However, for simplicity, we will think of, of an extremely simple city. In this city, there are 4,000 residents, all who, and all of them live in the same point, point A, in the west of the city, and they have to commute every day to point B to work in the right and in the east side of the city. There are two routes that they could take to work. They could take a northern route, and they could take a southern route. The northern route would be A, C, B, and the southern route would be A, D, B. Each route has two segments. One fast segment that always takes 45 minutes no matter what, so you can think about this as a very wide highway that doesn't suffer of congestion, but maybe it's a bit of a detour so it goes, it goes a long way around. And then there are these short segments, A, D, and C, B, which are very short and straight, but they are also narrow. So they are, they are going to be affected by traffic. The amount of time that it takes to travel this segment is going to be x over 100, where x is the number of cars using it. So the more cars, the longer it takes to go through these segments. Now, in order to make predictions about actual commute times, we're going to have to have a theory on how people choose which route to use. And the theory that I'm going to set forth is that people use Google Maps to choose the fastest route given the existing traffic. This idea is tantamount to the concept of equilibrium from game theory. All right, so given this assumption, let us analyze what people would do. And for that, let's go ahead and draw our city again. So we have the northern route and we have the southern route. And let me, let me use the word N to denote the number of cars that, that travel through the northern route and the word S to denote the number of cars that travel through the southern route. All right, and um, let's try to figure out what, what values for N and S are going to be consistent with our assumptions. So first, let us entertain the possibility that N is greater than S. That is, um, in the morning where people check their phone, more Google tells more people to go north than to go south. Since both routes are symmetric, that would imply um, that there would be more cars using the northern route and therefore the northern route would be slower. However, Google tells everybody to take the shortest route, which means that Google will tell everybody to go to the southern route and not the southern route, which means that there will actually be more cars in the south than in the north. Since we started by assuming that there were more cars in the north than in the south, this is a contradiction and therefore it is not possible, um, or at least it is not consistent with our assumption. Similarly, if we try to assume that there are more people going to the north and to the south, our assumption would imply that there are more people going to the south and to the north, which is a contradiction. Hence, the only outcome that is consistent with our assumption is that the exact number of people go uh, e use each of the two routes. Uh, because since we have 4,000 people, that means that there are 2,000 people going through the north and 2,000 people going through the south which means that the short segment would take uh, 20 minutes and the total travel time on each of the two routes would be exactly 65 minutes. All right, so that is our, our status quo. That is how traffic would look like without, uh, without the bridge. It would take an hour 15 minutes for each member of society to go from A to B. So let us summarize that again. If everybody chooses the fastest route taking traffic into account, then it has to be the case that half the cars are going north, half the cars are going south, and as a result, everybody takes 65 minutes to get to their destination. Now that's a long time, so here comes the politician and says, I propose that we build a bridge connecting C to D, and this is going to be a super wide, super fast bridge. In fact, it's going to take less than a minute to go from C to D or vice versa, 
we're going to model that as, as, as taking exactly zero minutes. And um, so the city would look like this with one very wide uh, highway that goes from A to C to D to B, and then these two smaller routes that are prone to congestion. So how much should we pay for it? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to figure out what would be the effect that it would have on traffic. So let's go ahead and try to analyze um, under the same assumption that people are choosing the fastest route given existing traffic patterns. Let's try to figure out which route people would choose once we build this bridge. The key thing to notice is that there are essentially two ways to get from A to C. You could directly take the highway and go from A to C, or you could take the short route from A to D and then use the bridge to go to C. Doing that, uh, the amount of time that it takes, it would depend on the number of, of cars taking that route, but that time would never be more than 40 minutes. Even if all 4,000 drivers were to drive from A to D and then from D to C, the amount of time that that would take would be at most 40 minutes. In contrast, using the highway from, to go from A to C always takes 45 minutes which means that nobody would ever have any reasons to take that highway because there is a, sh a, a shortest way uh, to, to go from the same starting point to the same destination. By a similar argument, nobody would ever use this, the highway going from D to B because people would rather go from, from D to C and then from C to B. Um, so what we can conclude from those two things is that everybody would end up taking the same route going first from A to D uh, then from D to C they would take the highway a little bit and then they would take the second shortest, the second shortest path from C to B. Alright, so that's the route that everybody would choose if, if, if Google Maps were to tell them how long each, each route takes, no matter what the traffic is. So let's, let's see what would be the total travel time. Because there are 4,000 cars using each of the roads, then each of the short segments would take 4,000 over 100 which is equal to 40 minutes, which means that the total travel time would be 80 minutes. And now we are in position to determine how much we should pay for the bridge. Because if you have been paying attention, you will notice that the bridge would actually make the total travel time worse. Without the bridge, everybody was taking one hour, five minutes to get to their destination. Once they build this bridge, everybody's taking one hour and 20 minutes to get to their destination. So adding the bridge actually makes the total travel time worse for everyone. Since this result is probably not what all of you expected ex ante, we call it a paradox. Uh, and in general, we can talk about this paradox as saying that adding resources to a network, for instance, adding roads to a city, can worsen its performance. For instance, it could, it could increase traffic. So how much we want to pay? Well, we want to pay exactly zero. Now, the result might sound paradoxical at first, but we will see that there's an actually very intuitive reason why it happens. And the reason is because people are making decisions from a selfish perspective. So let's go back to analyzing our Google map picture and think about the fact that if you take this fastest route, you will drive through downtown, where there are a lot of people trying to go to different places, and your presence, your, the fact that you're there, would actually create a little bit of traffic for each of the other cars that are, that are downtown. In contrast, if you would take a, a different route that goes through Warren Cliff and, and Commissioner's Road to get to the hospital, um, well, these are roads that are designed to handle wider volume and there are less cars there, so you wouldn't generate so much traffic. However, that's not something that people actually think about when they are deciding which route to take. They just look at which route is the shortest one or the fastest one for them, and that's the one that they take. And this behavior might be a bit selfish, but it's perfectly normal. The important thing for us is to understand that people are not internalizing the effect that their choices have on other people, and therefore it's natural that behavior that is individually optimal, it's not going to be optimal from a social perspective. More importantly, what we really care about is about understanding the effect of the bridge. And what the bridge is doing is that it, it's creating incentives for everybody to take the same route. So it's concentrating all the drivers on the same route, and what that means is that it's increasing the externality that each driver creates on other, on other drivers on the road. And, uh, and that's why, why it's, it's, it's increasing the amount of traffic, by increasing the inefficiency of, of the individually optimal decisions. So in general, what we want to do to avoid these kind of situations is to try to avoid city designs that are going to create incentives for everybody to be taking the same route. 
For example, you would like to have uh, roads that, that try to divert traffic around the city instead of having big roads that go through the city and concentrate everybody um, and, and, and make everybody, uh, again, take the same route. Now, you might be concerned that the city that we have been looking at, it's a really simple city with really simple traffic patterns. Uh, and you might think that the result is driven by the specific characteristics of this city. But that's actually not true. If you generate that city at random, with traffic needs at random, and then you randomly add a road, you have about a 50-50 chance of making the, the traffic worse when you add this road. So, you know, this kind of price paradox behavior, it's, it's actually a lot more persistence than our intuition would tell us. And the idea that, that in general you, it's better to have ring roads than highways that go through the cities, it's actually quite general. Now, there are other reasons why building roads can in increase traffic. For example, because, because when you build more roads, people tend to buy more cars, and that's something called induced demand, and you can read about it in Wikipedia. But for us, it's important to understand that even if you don't change the number of cars in the city, and even if you don't change the number of trips that people are making, closing or narrowing roads can actually improve traffic if it, if it results in configurations where people will have incentives to take different routes. Now, this is something that at first sight, if, if I hadn't shown you the, the graphs and, and we haven't solved this with, with a lot of detail, it wouldn't have been intuitive. And that poses a problem a political economic problem because it is very hard to convey non-intuitive ideas for voters and therefore it is very difficult for politicians to, to implement policies that are not intuitive. However, these political economy effects are beyond the scope of this class. If you're interested in them, you should take Al Slavinsky's political econ class uh, next semester. All right, let us finish this video talking about some real life instances of Bryce paradox. One of the most famous one is this highway in South Korea that for a number of reasons it was shut down in 2005 and converted into this nice uh, open river. And doing so didn't really increase traffic in, in Seoul. Actually, the reports say that it made traffic better. Um, there are other examples. One of the most famous one is a highway in San Francisco that, after that, that was shut down not from a political decision but from an earthquake. And when people realized that traffic, instead of getting worse, got better, they decided to not build it again. There is also a famous example in Stuttgart, Germany, where after they spent a lot of money to make a, a road wider, they realized that traffic got worse, so they decided to make the road narrow again. So this is a good place for us to stop. Uh, we'll continue next time talking about a roommate's dilemma, and we'll introduce one of the biggest problems in mechanism design, which is the information problem. Now, in reality, when you build a city, you don't know how many people need to go from which place to what place, and that actually makes the problem way more interesting to solve. See you next time.